Love Jesus. Bless his name. My soul. Love Jesus. My soul. Love Jesus. My soul. Love Jesus. Bless his name. He's a wonder. Oh, Baba Shah. In my soul. He's a wonder. In my soul. He's a wonder. In my soul. Bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. Oh, ba, 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 ha. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name, yes, 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 ah, yeah, ba, 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 ha, glory, yes, 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 Father God, in Jesus' name, God, we love you on tonight. God, I will so praise you and magnify your name. God, you are our help and our strength. God, you know our needs, you know our wants, you know our desire. God, we need to hear a word from you on tonight, oh God. God, look on our own evangelist white, oh God. That's going to deliver the message unto your people tonight, God. God, free us from on high, oh God. Speak a word of healing. Speak a word of deliverance. In the name of Jesus, God, we need your help. God, we need your strength. God, we need your healing. God, we need your deliverance. God, we need your power. God, we need your love. God, come on in, God. Send your help on tonight, God. Bless our events this white on tonight, oh God. God, will you know what we need, oh God? Help us, Lord. Take us through every trial. Take us through every test. Keep our heart and our mind, Lord. God, let it be stayed on thee, O oh God. Now, God, we give you praise. All glory and honor belong to thee. Now, only black we act in your son Jesus' name. Every heart say, thank God. Amen and amen. Scripture reading is coming from Psalms 18. I will love thee, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I read to you Psalms 18, verses 1 through 3. If you are excited to be in the house of the Lord or watching virtually on tonight, clap your hands and give praise to our God. This is the month of April and this Wednesday night, April 21st, we are in revival here at New Birth. Saints of God, we are almost through this. God is blessing, God is keeping, and God has sustained us and for that, we owe him all the praise and all of the glory. The word of God has its way and has its free course here at the New Birth Church of God in Christ. Our pastor believes in the word of God and he believes in allowing the Lord to have his way. We are honored and grateful for our revival to be held on this week and the fantastic, illustrious, Evangelist of the week is the one and only pastor evangelist, Gilbert S. White of Newark, New Jersey. Come on and clap your hands 
for this powerful man of God. He serves his jurisdiction in New Jersey under the leadership of Bishop William Calhoun. He has served as the evangelist president, but also to show his anointing, he is also the youth president of that jurisdiction. He has worked nationally during the AIM convention with our young people, coordinating the late night sports events that take place during our AIM convention. But if you know Pastor White, you know at his heart, at his core, and in his DNA is evangelism. He runs and conducts workshops all across the country, even while pastoring two churches in Newark, New Jersey, teaching and showing the anointing in having altar calls, instructing evangelists on how to sacrifice and to give their lives to the Lord. Although he is in New Jersey and we are virtual, the anointing and the word still is going to be with us all week long. He is a dear friend of our pastor, Bishop Willard L. Payton, and we are honored to have evangelist Pastor Gilbert S. White Sr. to be our revivalist. On tonight, our sermonic solo will be sung by one of New Birth's own, the sister Reba Ellis. And once she has finished, we will be in the hands of our evangelist. Will you say amen for the soloist and say amen for Pastor White? stars I hear the roaring thunder God's power throughout the universe displayed then sings my The Lord bless you on tonight. We honor the spirit of Christ. Thank God for his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his loving kindness and tender charity that he has shown towards us one more time. God is good all by himself and the Bible is right. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. It is because his compassions fail not. They're renewed every morning and great is our God's faithfulness. 
Well, I know some of y'all here in the Windy City are saying, my goodness, the fella just got up and he's hollering already. Well, the original voice of Tony the Tiger died and I took his place. And I just want you to know our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. And I made a vow to the Lord and I will not take it back that I will never ever be guilty of the sin of ingratitude. It's a sin for anyone to be unthankful to God, but it's especially egregious when believers in Christ do not give him the glory, the honor, the praise that is due his name. And so I made a vow to God that I'm going to always be over there in the line of the thankful. In fact, I'm going to be first in the line. Don't you try and get ahead of me. I'm going to make sure I'm the first one to give God the glory, the honor, the praise that is due his name. I'm excited and honored of the Lord to be having, have been invited by the one and only Bishop Willard Payton and our precious mother Gloria Payton and the wonderful saints of the New Birth Church of God in Christ in the great city of Chicago, Illinois. I am so excited and elated. I'm, I'm nervous as well. If y'all can't tell, yes, I am. I'm about as nervous as I can be. But when I consider who has invited me, this godly man, this servant of the Lord, this highly anointed servant of God with deep wisdom and is always pouring in to the next generations, I, I can only just stand in awe of the God that's in him. And I stand here with great humility, just wondering what kind of favor have I found with this servant of the Lord to have been invited. And so would you help me on tonight salute the one and only Bishop Willard Payton, your pastor, and we thank God for this anointed servant of the Lord. We give God glory, honor, and praise. Those of you watching on Facebook, put it in the comment line. Let's celebrate this man of God. Clap your hands, put a little, them little love notes and all that kind of stuff we do. He is a tremendous individual. And I had the privilege of meeting him several years ago while working in the International Youth Department of which I am part of the staff. And we just glad and honored of the Lord to have worked with him. And of course he was our convention planning and all of the above. And I told him this some years ago, I don't know if he'll remember, but um, I, I, I just watch him and Dr. Kershaw, Bishop Kershaw, and I just watch how these men of God serve our great church. And I told him, every time you pick your foot up, I'm going to put my foot where you just step. <laughs> because you want to learn from the best. And I just believe that God has anointed him with tremendous wisdom and knowledge and understanding of how to get things done and accomplish in the kingdom of God. So I salute you on tonight, Bishop Payton, and to our precious mother, Gloria Payton, because beside and behind every great man, there is a great woman. To my brothers, um, thank God for Elder Chris and Elder Michael Payton, my friends and brothers. I love these young men. I watched them serve with their dad as well in the international meetings, and just, just incredible young men. And we thank God for each of you, all of the elders, ministers, missionaries, our mothers in Zion there at New Birth, and the wonderful young people. I'm a strong advocate for youth ministry. And I celebrate the seniors especially because one of these days I'll be one, Lord willing. And we just thank God for each and every one of you. So we want to encourage you to come on and be with us on this week. You'll be so glad that you did. Uh, I just love the Lord. I love God's people. I love the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love to see what the power of the gospel will do. So encourage everybody to come and be with us throughout this week. We'll be on each night at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. To all of my friends, my brothers and sisters that are watching on the East Coast, that will be 8.30 Eastern, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. We'll be coming forth to you with the word of the Lord. To all of my family and friends that's on the West Coast, it will be 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Come on and be with us and encourage others to come on, tag it, like it, share it, have a watch party, call everybody in the room and tell them there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace towards us. And thank you for this tremendous opportunity afforded us to share your rich, precious, powerful word with these, your wonderful people. And it's in the name of Jesus that we take authority over every spirit contrary to the perfect will of God and to the moving of the Holy Ghost in this service on tonight. Satan, and the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. I dismiss you from your assignment against this spring revival, this time of refreshing and renewal for the people of God. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that as your word goes forth under the power of your spirit, that someone will be saved, someone will be healed, someone will be delivered from the powers of darkness. Bring that backslider back home. Oh God, bring them home this night. We pray in the name of Jesus as your word goes forth. Let it arrest the hearts and minds and souls that shall hear on tonight. If anyone stands in need of healing, bring them all the way through to full deliverance in their body, their soul, their mind, their spirit. 
whatever the circumstance might be, I pray that you make them whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we thank you that it is so. Remember our precious bishop, his wife, and the family members there at New Birth. Bless the ministry. Send supernatural increase. Pray that you'd elevate that ministry. Take it to a new dimension. No higher plane that we have found. Lord, plant our feet on higher ground. As we minister your word on tonight, hide me somewhere behind the cross of Calvary. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Use me in your service and pour your glory. And I'll be first in line to give your name the praise, the honor that is due your name. Save that sinner, Lord. Arrest the heart of that sinner. Bring him in, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I thank you that it is so. Amen. Hallelujah. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He satisfies. He satisfies Jesus he satisfies bless the name of the Lord grab your Bibles come on grab your Bibles go with us to the book of Acts I like to call it the actions of the Holy Ghost through the Apostles Acts chapter 3 at verse 19 is our key verse for tonight, and we'll go as far as the Lord will allow us to go on this evening. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins, plural, may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you on tonight about times, plural, of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. Somebody just type that there in the comment line. Times of refreshing. The Lord knows during this pandemic, of which we're not yet out of, we need a time and some times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. So many of our brothers and sisters have gone on to be with the Lord and so many that didn't know the Lord have transitioned and sadly they're going to end up in the lake of fire. But to many of us that love the Lord and we're so concerned about the condition of this nation and of this world, and many of us are suffering from burnout. We got pastors that are thrown in a towel, calling it quits, saying I can't do it any longer. People won't support, people aren't giving, people aren't attending, they're not even attending virtually. They forgot all about the Lord's house. We need some times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Can you say amen? Go on, type amen down there somewhere. And so we want to talk on tonight about times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. On tonight, our text is taken. Um, it's found in Peter's second sermon there in the book of Acts. On this particular day, Peter and John, they were entering into the temple to pray about the 3 p.m., the ninth hour. Oh, I love the fact that they were on their way to pray. Uh, so many want the power of God. We talk about the power of God, but I found out that prayers don't talk and talkers don't pray. And so if we really want power with God, we're going to have to pray. And the old rap artists had to help the church and said, we need to pray. We need to pray just to make it today. We need to pray. And so Jesus said it before the rap artists did. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And here they were. As they went into him, they saw a man who was lame from his birth. And he had been coming on a daily basis asking alms. He was a beggar. And the Bible lets us know that Peter looked on him and said to this young man, look on us. The lame man was expecting to receive money from them, but he received something far more valuable than silver and gold. Peter took him by his right hand. Oh, there's a message in that all by itself. He took him by his right hand and helped the man up. And as he did, the Bible said that the man sweet in his ankle bones received strength and the man was instantaneously healed and made whole. He began to stand. He began to walk. He began to leap. 
And the word of God said he went into the temple praising the almighty God. Those that were there knew this man's condition. They began to be filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. And the Lord was really just setting them up to see how they viewed the miracles that the apostles were performing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And please allow me to back up just for a moment. They were standing there in wonder and amazement. And there's a little something that just irks me about believers of Christ Jesus. We read the scriptures. We say we believe the scriptures. We've seen the power of God at work. And we sometimes stand there in amazement wondering, well, what in the world is going on? Either we believe that he is the awesome God, the almighty, true, and living God, and that he has powers and abilities far beyond mortal men, and he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us, or not. And so since we know that he can do far above what our imagination can even consider, I don't know why we stand in amazement when we see the power of God in action. I think we ought to just dive right in and just go to celebrating and praising the name of the Lord and, and not be standing there wondering what in the world is going on here. Oh, no, we know what's going on. God is at it again. Oh, I want to be there when Bishop Peyton preaches that one. God is at it again. And so the Bible lets us know that Peter began to preach to them and let them know what they had just witnessed was not done by their power, but by the power of God through the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters that are in the gospel ministry, I don't care how God uses you. You might preach a sermon and people get delivered. You may lay hands on someone and they get delivered. You make sure God gets all the glory. I don't care if you're in Walmart in the produce department by cantaloupes and lemons and limes. You just break out in song and say, do God be the glory. Don't ever be guilty of stealing God's glory, stealing God's praise. He let them know we didn't do this of our own accord. We did not do this of our own power, but this was done by the power of God through the name of Jesus. Oh yes, after all these years, there's yet power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Peter then questioned them and asked why they were so, why were they standing there in such amazement? Why are you looking at us as if we did it? Oh, I could stay there for an hour. I'm so tired. Y'all pray for me. I'm tired of the young men running around. What happened when I laid my hands on you? This one right here. What happened when I touched you? What happened when I... Listen, that's part of the problem. Your eyes and your eyes will get you in trouble. Your personal pronoun. That's what got Satan in trouble. He wanted to exalt his throne above the throne of God. He said, I will exalt my, and God overheard the conversation and kicked the rascal so hard, he deceived the third part of the angelic host, snatched them and dragged them down into the atmospheric heaven, and they became demons and unclean spirits. And that's why it's such a challenge for you to get your prayers through, because they're at war. They're in the atmospheric heaven. Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and those demons are at work in the air, but you got to learn how to persevere in prayer keep on praying for the Lord is not don't you stop praying he'll hear you cry the Lord has promised and his word is true you just keep on praying he will answer you brothers and sisters we should never ever stand in amazement as to what God is doing I will say this as well though whenever you come into the presence of the Lord whenever we come together as a body of baptized believers to worship the true and living God we ought to come with great expectation saying to ourselves I want to what God is going to do today. Now, I would like to say this as well, that prayer produces power with God. And if you got a praying church, every time we come together, there ought to be an explosion of the power and presence of God. Somebody ought to be made whole. Somebody ought to be healed. Somebody ought to be delivered. Souls ought to be saved. Backsliders ought to come back home. We should see canes and crutches lining the auditorium because of the power of God in action. All right, so what Paul Peter did, rather, brothers and sisters, he seized the opportunity to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. He let them know that the Lord, it was the Lord that did this. It wasn't us. It wasn't because I'm so great and my name is Apostle. My, my title is Apostle. By the way, that's title, not your name. Apostle's not your name. Pastor's not your name. Evangelist isn't your name. I wish y'all would talk to me. Teacher's not your name. Uh, uh, bishop is not your name. Your name is whatever your mom and dad labeled you with. 
I wish y'all would say amen, but brothers and sisters, we get caught up in titles, and, and I wish we could throw all these titles out except brother and sister. Anyhow, back to the subject. And so Peter continued to explain the meaning behind the miracle, that it was God's doing through Jesus Christ, whom the Jewish leaders have rejected and handed over to Pontius Pilate. He then began to say, I see that you're ignorant of the fact that the Holy One, speaking of our God, the Holy One and the just whom you crucified has made this man whole. Oh, by the way, it was all in God's plan to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation to that land. And so he then called on the people to do the most important thing you could ever do, and that is repent. Turn from your sins. Change your heart, change your mind, change your direction, and say, I'm no longer going to continue to walk in a manner displeasing to the Lord. He told them to repent and to turn from their sins so that they might be blotted out. Then the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you really consider this, this is no more or less than a description of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. When we look at the words in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, it simply says this, Then Peter, this is on the day of Pentecost, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as, as as many as the Lord our God shall call. And so there are three things I need to point out before we hasten to a close here on today. There are three things I want to share of what the baptism in the Holy Ghost isn't, what it is not. Number one, the baptism in the Holy Ghost is not a man-made experience. It doesn't have its origins or its beginnings in the will of a man dead or alive. It's not an invention of the modern day church. It's an experience from the almighty true and living God. Please note the Bible said that times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Anything that is from something is of it. So the pressure refreshings that come from the presence of the Lord actually come out of the Lord himself. Uh, please understand, remember in Acts chapter 2 that there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Uh, I preached some years ago, Lord, bring back the sound of Pentecost. Uh, and if you look at many of our congregations, uh, even before the pandemic and even since the pandemic even virtually there's something that I am not hearing as a servant of the Lord and that is the sound of Pentecost I'm hearing sounding brass and tinkling cymbal but I'm not hearing the sound of Pentecost you know that old school sound of saints on the altar crying out to God with their whole heart saying fill me Jesus come in Jesus deliver me to more oh God baptize me afresh in the Holy Ghost we're not hearing the sound of Pentecost but I'm asking God Lord bring back the sound of Pentecost. Uh, bring back the sound to your house. Uh, look at what the Bible said concerning the sound of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, y'all know it better than I do. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible lets us know and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all all filled, I like that word all, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance or the ability to speak. But notice Pentecost, it came. It came when it came, but it also came with the sound. Uh, did you not know many people that have experienced tornadoes and severe storms? Uh, uh, my brother who is our technician on today, he's from the state, the great state of Mississippi. Am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I hump back, hump back. Uh, he's from the, this great state state of Mississippi and they have tornadoes like you would not believe in the state of Mississippi but whenever the news people go there and they ask well what did it sound like everybody seems to say the same thing it sound like a freight train coming it sound like a freight train coming you need to understand that the sound that came on the day of Pentecost it had a distinct sound and I'm asking God Lord bring back the sound ah, I'm going to leave y'all alone bring back the sound of Pentecost it came came as of a rushing and a mighty wind. Now the sound didn't fill them. The sound filled the house. And you do know sound makes you move. I'm here in Brick 
City, USA, Newark, New Jersey. I was born in Jersey City. I saw the towers fall. My God lived less than three miles, two miles from New York City. And we saw the things fall. But I was living while living here in Newark, New Jersey. One of those fellas that had a boom box or, or a sound system in his car. The sound system looked like it cost more than the car. He sat out in front of our residence one time and pumped that thing up till I literally bounced out of the bed. I want you to know sound reverberates. It makes you move. And we need to ask God to bring back the sound of Pentecost. Please understand when I ask for the sound of Pentecost, I'm not so much concerned about the sound. I'm concerned about the producer of the sound. Oh, if God is behind it because he's the one that sent the presence of the Lord. He's the one that sent the refreshing. He's the one that allowed the sound as of a rushing mighty wind to come and fill the whole house where they were sitting. Let the church say amen. And so, my friends, we need to remember that there came a sound from heaven. In Acts chapter 1, please note that it's the promise of the Father. It's the promise that came from God the Father. And he was given commandment. Jesus gave his disciples commandment. He said, get to stepping. Go to Jerusalem and stay there till you be endued, till you be clothed, till you be dressed, till you be saturated, till you be permeated with power from on high. There in Acts chapter 1, they were in a prayer meeting. Saints of God, if we want power with God, we've got to pray. We've got to seek the face of God. We've got to go up to God like a bloodhound. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. The unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy unto us and unto our God for he will abundantly pardon. Oh but if we want power with God we've got to pray. We've got to seek God as never before. God bless our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard who immediately called the church into prayer and fasting and repentance and, and seeking the face of God. I love the fact that our leader did not waste one moment. The moment he knew he was ratified or certified, my God, he said we're going into prayer immediately. And oh, brothers and sisters, I'm here to encourage every one of you. Don't you dare turn prayer loose and don't let prayer turn you loose. You hold on to the horns of the altar and let's seek God in a new way. Secondly, concerning this thing of times of repression, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Listen real good. It is a life changing encounter with the almighty God. In order to receive the Holy Ghost, we need a clear understanding of who, not what, but who he is. He is God all by himself. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. So everything that can be said about God can be said about the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, he is God. Are uh, y'all here today? Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. We don't serve three gods. We serve one God, eternally assistant, in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is the church. This is the church of God in Christ. And so he is God. So everything and anything that can be said about God can also be said about the Holy Ghost. God is holy and so is the Holy Ghost. God is omnipotent. So is the Holy Ghost. God is eternal. So is the Holy Ghost. God is love and so is the Holy Ghost. So to be filled with the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, is to be filled with the very presence of the almighty, true, and living God. And it's also to be filled with the power of God. It was a time and it is a time of repression from the presence of the Lord. It is to be immersed in the holiness and the love of the almighty God. When we receive the Holy Ghost, we become an avenue and a conduit of his power and his presence into the lives of others. Jesus stood up and cried on that great day. My God, he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he or she that believes on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake of the spirit that they which believed on him should receive. Because the Holy Ghost had not yet been given. Because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Please understand that the baptism in the Holy Ghost is not a dry unemotional experience it's a time of refreshing it's a time of revival it's a time of renewed strength it's a time when we are edified it's a time when we are built up on our most holy faith 
being filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, it brings us into a more intimate relationship uh, with our God. Uh, when we look into the Word, uh, there are several symbols uh, of how He refreshes, uh, He restores, uh, He renews, uh, and He revives our souls. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, my God is like a cool drink. Uh, According to John 4 and 13, uh, like a refreshing ray from heaven uh, in Zechariah 10 and 1, uh, he flows to us uh, like a life changing river uh, in John 7 and 37, uh, Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12, uh, he blows into our lives uh, like a cool, cool breeze uh, on a hot day, uh, according to John 3 and 8, uh, and what we need to do uh, is let the Lord blow on us one more time blow into our lives today being filled with the Holy Ghost will bring us into a more intimate relationship with the almighty God according to Romans 5 and 5 and Psalm 42 and 1 as the heart H-A-R-T doe a deer a female deer as he panted after the water brook even so panted my soul after the old God my soul personal for God for the living God, we got to get hungry. We got to get desperate for filling up God's spirit, for refilling up God's Holy Ghost, for a baptism, for a time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Point number four, the baptism in the Holy Ghost is not a one-time experience. Please note, the Bible said it's times T-I-M-E-S of refreshing. It's plural. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. This indicates that there are multiple experiences with the Lord. And sadly, too many make the mistake of thinking that it's a one-time experience. And that's all that I need. And that's enough. But brothers and sisters, regardless of how powerful you are, and you and I profess to be, one experience is not enough. Thank God for the old school saints that told us there's one baptism, but many refillings. Some of you out there watching right now, you got a brand new car, you got a Lexus, a Benz, a Beam, and a boat. But there's a few of y'all that got a hoopty, and you got a prayer mobile. Every time you get in it, you have a prayer meeting that it will turn over and get you to work or school. But I want you to know I don't care how long or how short you had that vehicle when you purchased it, even if it was full of fuel, the moment you drove it up that car lot, it's no longer full. So you got to go back to Exxon. You got to go back to Shell. You got to go back to BP and say, fill it up. And isn't it good to know that the God that we serve, he's the God of the endless supply, the endless supply of power, the endless supply of strength, the endless supply of the anointing, the endless supply of power to live this life. Power to do what God told us to do. Yes. Well, I got to quit, but the Bible lets us know in the New Testament, there were repeated fillings of the Holy Ghost. 25 years after the day of Pentecost, Peter was at a place called Ephesus, and he asked them a question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we didn't even hear that there be a Holy Ghost. He said, no problem. I need you to know that there is. And he took those anointed hands and laid it on them. And the Bible said they spake with tongues. Yeah, the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. But 25 years later, he fell again on another occasion. Peter was up preaching and the Bible said, and I love the word. I love the word of God. The Bible said, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard the word. So brothers and sisters, what we all need to do is go back to the altars of God and stay there till you be endued. Stay there till we be clothed. Stay there till we be dressed. 
say that till we be saturated, permeated, endowed with power. Power from on high. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And I don't know what your prayer is, but my prayer is even me, even me, Lord, let some drops, let it fall on me. If it falls on me, I can do your will. If it falls on me, I can walk upright. If it falls on me, I can preach this word. If it falls on me, I can win the loss. If it falls on me, I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, baptize us afresh with the Holy Ghost and with power. Power. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do something that the devil won't do. I'm going to leave y'all alone. But before I do, I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit of God, he's so holy, he don't live just anywhere. We got to be clean. Won't he make you clean inside? Yeah. We got to be born again. We got to be saved because the Spirit of God will not indwell an unclean temple. So we need to be saved. And you got to know that you're saved. Well, how do I know that I'm saved? It's as simple as as much as you obey God's word because partial obedience is total disobedience. And if God said do A, B, and C, I'll give you D. You got to do it God's way because I found out God's way is the way. It's not just the best way. It's the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to God the Father except they come through me. So we got to acknowledge it. That's the A. We got to own up to the fact that I'm a sinner. I'm a lost and I'm undone. Don't know God or his son. Then we got to believe. That's letter B. We got to believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever somebody once asked me Deacon Williams somebody asked me brother Chris what's your name I said my name is whosoever God said whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life you gotta believe that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil he suffered, he bled, he died, he shed his innocent blood on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. You got to believe that Jesus died. But thank God, that's not the end of the story. He got up. He got up on the third day morning with power. Power on earth. Power in hell. Power in heaven. All power. Black power. White power, power. Well, we got to acknowledge, we got to believe, then we got to confess. That's letter C. You got to own up to the fact and agree with God. I'm a sinner, I'm lost. You're the only one that can save me. So, Lord, have mercy on me. Come into my heart, wash me now. In your precious blood, I'm ready and willing to turn from my wicked ways. And you said, in your word, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And he that come up unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Save me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Deliver me, O oh God. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Master. Be my Redeemer. Be my only hope. Have an eternal home in heaven. And so you acknowledge 
you acknowledge, you believe, we confess, then he delivers. And if any man be in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. The way I used to walk, I don't walk anymore. The way I used to talk, I don't talk anymore. Yeah! Then you are a candidate to be filled with the Spirit of God. And you can begin to worship and praise the Lord. Ask Him to fill you. Jesus said, everyone that asks, receives. He that seeks, shall find. To him that knocks, it shall be open unto him. Ask God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to fight. You don't have to wrestle to receive a gift. You simply ask. Then when the praise with joy, we draw water from the wells of our salvation. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Holy Ghost, fall right now. Both of you that are watching on YouTube, that are watching on Facebook, if you're not yet received the Holy Ghost and you're a born again believer, ask God to fill you. Come on in, Jesus. Even if you receive the Holy Ghost, ask Him to do it again. Baptize me afresh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on in. Sanctify me the more. Burn out of me. Everything not like you. Fill me, oh God, to overflowing. Come on, Jesus. Have your way in me. Come on, Jesus. Well, I'm out. But I just want you to know we need a refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And I've got news for you. Right there where you are, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Yes, he's here. So reach out. You heard me. I said to reach out and touch the Lord. As he goes by, you'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs he will supply. Reach out. And touch the Lord as he goes by. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That's right out there. Clap those hands. Open up your mouths. Give God glory. Give God praise. Exalt the name of the Lord. Come on, clap double time, double time. Like they do in the TV studios. Put those hands together. Bless the name of the Lord. Let him come in. Let him come in right now. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Fill us, Lord. Set your people on fire. Souls are dying and going to a Christless lake of fire. And you place this tremendous responsibility in our hands to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the land. And it's going to take the power, your power at work in us, with us, and through us to preach the word without compromise. To let dying men and sinking women know to the utmost Jesus saves. He'll pick you up, turn you around, plant your feet on solid ground. Hallelujah, Jesus saves. If there's someone watching tonight that may not know the Lord, I've got great news for you. He loves you. I don't care what you've done, how long you've done it, why you've done it, who you've done it to, who helped you do what you've done. 
And he stands ready to forgive you and to deliver you from the power and the effects of sin. What is sin but violating the law, the word, the will, the command of God? Doing the opposite of whatever he's commanded us to do. And if you would just let him know, dear God, I'm sorry, I'm wrong for the sins that I've committed. And I'm ready and willing to turn from them unto you. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to the multitude of your mercies, blot out my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my master. Be my redeemer. And empower me through your spirit to live the life that will be pleasing to you. And by your help, I will do just so. And tell others about you the balance of my days. It may seem such a simple prayer. But right there where you are, if you meant that prayer, Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And he that come up unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Thank you, Lord. I will in no wise cast out. And so I say to you, I say to you on today, I say to you on today, if you made that commitment to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you just put it down there in the comment line. Get in touch with Bishop Peyton and with the, the elders and the staff of the church and let them know I made a commitment to Jesus Christ. If you're a backslider and you came home, oh, I need to know about that one myself. I'm going to dance like nobody's watching. Over the past five, almost six months, the Lord has put backsliders on my heart. Yeah, that's right. I'm coming for you. I'm coming after every backslider I know. It's time for you to come on home. The Lord is going to receive you. He loves you. He loved you so much he never ever took off his wedding band. From the moment you left, he had his face in his hands with his elbows on the windowsill waiting for you to come back home. So you come on home. You'll be glad you did. Not only will the Lord receive you, oh, I promise, we got some saints around here at New Birth and here at good old God in action in Gethsemane here in New Jersey. We're going to dance like nobody's watching. Something happens when our brothers and sisters come back into the fold. We're going to celebrate your return. We're not going to be like that jealous brother that got angry and said, Daddy, I never left. Oh, no, we're going to just celebrate till times get better. And so we thank God for each and every one. And to someone who may be sick and afflicted right now, I speak words of healing and deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Woman be made whole. Man be delivered. Little boy, little girl be set free by the powers of the almighty, true and living God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be made whole. I rebuke sickness, disease, death, infirmity. I curse it at the root. I command it to dry up and cease its activity. Loose that man right now. Loose that woman. Loose that boy. Loose that girl. Lord, make them whole that your name might be exalted. That your name might be glorified, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. And we decree it and receive it by faith. Somebody in that comment line, begin to give God praise. Those of you watching on YouTube, begin to worship and praise the name of the Lord. Let's thank God for the deliverance that has come, the healing that has come, the refreshing that has come. To those that have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, let's thank God even now. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of our God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord bless you on today. We're moving forward. We're going to invite you to come back and be with us on tomorrow evening. The Lord's saying the same. Again, don't forget, we're beginning at 7.30 Central Standard Time. To all of our friends that are watching um, on the East Coast, we will begin at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. To those on the West Coast in the Pacific Standard Time, please join us at 5.30 Pacific Time, if at all possible. We'll be so glad to have you come on and be with us. And I know our bishop will be so happy that you have joined us during this spring revival. We believe in God for great manifestation of his spirit, of his power, of his presence. To those of you that desire to be a blessing to this revival, your help and your support is needed, but it's even more so appreciated. Would you allow the Lord to use you to be a blessing to this revival? I didn't put any chains or, or no expectations on my friend and brother, Bishop Peyton, nor the new birth family, but we know what's right to do. In fact, I will be sowing myself, and I wanna challenge as many of you as can to trust the Lord in your giving. I need at least 100 of you that will trust the Lord in your giving and give no less than $50 to help us be a blessing to this revival. I'm going to do far more than that. My wife and I, we're going to sow $200 and we're trusting God to bless this revival. And I want you to allow the Lord to use you to be a blessing to this revival. If you'd be so kind, you could look right down there in the lower third. The scroll is going across your screen where you can give and lend your support to this great ordained ministry of the almighty, true and living God. I'm excited and just glad to be a part of this spring revival. For many years, Bishop Peyton said, Brother White, I want you to come. And I would always say to him, when the time is right. And this is the time that the Lord has ordained for us to come together and share with you the unsearchable riches of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it's our hope and prayer that someone has been ministered to on tonight, that someone has come to know the Lord in the part of their sins. 
just on last evening we did our virtual East Region Youth Revival, Youth Rally. And the Lord blessed me to minister, and it was a young man way out somewhere on the end of Long Island that committed his life to Jesus Christ. And so don't you let anybody tell you that this virtual is not working. Somebody is going to get to know the Lord. And so we want you to tag it, like it, share it, have a watch party. Bring those unsaved sons and daughters, unsaved parents. Uh, bring them into the room. Say, would you watch this with me? And let's get these souls into the kingdom of God for his glory and for his honor. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you is my prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until the next time, the Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord.